Let's practice building some AQL with flows here from my home system. I've been replaying some some attacks, some malicious traffic and stuff uh, in here, and I want to do some searches. So let's start. Let's say that I want to see what are the destination IP, the, the IPs outside my house that uh, this thing is uh, talking to. So the first thing I need to do is use the select, right? And we're going to be selecting destination IP. Let me get more resolution here to get the look ahead to help me. Destination IP from flows. And I like to start these things very slowly and build from it. So if I click here, just like that, the AQL search runs and I have this. But I want to do some more things. So first of all, I want to see how much traffic is actually going out. So I want to add another column and then you separate the columns with a comma in this in the AQL statement. And what I want to do is I want to get the sum of the destination byte. Bytes, there it is. I want those things be added. So I, I'll, I got a sense of how much data is actually going out. Okay, and we have most of the thing here at home are going to quad nine, and that's the one that has uh, that. But uh, let's keep on doing some more things. I get more. IPs in here because I know that there's more than one. Well, all I need to do is actually group all these by precisely destination IP. Let me have the look ahead in here. Let's see if I get what I want. Yep, that's more like it. Well, I don't like that title, some destination bytes. I just want to rename that column as total bytes out. When I run it like that, that's a little better. That column being renamed. Well, let's say I want to filter some of this data. There are five pages, as you can see here. There's a lot of data in there. And let's say that I want to do some grouping in here. And right after the flows, if we put the WHERE clause, we can do some filter. For example, let's say I want only the stuff going out. So there's a parameter called flow direction. And here it is. The look ahead helps me find that here. And I only want the stuff when the flow direction is, and this is a nomenclature, L for local to remote. Only the data going out. Let's run the search and that's going to filter some of those only when the data is going out. Let's say that you want not only the data going out but you want the data coming in. You want them both. How do you add those two if you only have one equal here? Well that's when you use the in statement and you put here local to remote comma remote to local. So in other words you are leaving just the local to local traffic out. Then when you close this parenthesis and you run it, you should get that traffic. Notice that this thing went back to five pages. Right? But let's say that okay we learn how to do that. We're gonna do only the local to remote traffic. So let's go back to that equal sign. Okay? And again always run it separate I don't think he's going to complain about this one but let's uh, separate it to make sure that okay now I see here for example that total bytes out is a zero so this is really meaningful there was something that there was no conversation maybe it was something you know some some track of content but there was no transfers of data so I want to filter that one 
So I'm going to put in here another condition on the where. So I start by putting an and. I'm going to say the the traffic, the destination bytes. Destination bytes. I want this to be greater than zero. Okay. Let's run that. And this guy that we see on the top should not show up there anymore. And that's because that that was not meaningful. So let's say that I want this thing ordered with the places that have the most data going out. There's a statement here that is called order by. So after the group by, we put order by. We're going to select this total bytes out column. And look ahead, help me again. Let's see if I got this right. Uh, but I actually wanted the other way around. This is ascending. I wanted descending. Well, all I need to do is ascending is by default. I, if I put this, it should organize it the way I want them. That's better. Now, let's say that I want to get the IPs, but I'm interested in the IPs that have a bad reputation. Well, QReader has the capability of using a function. It's actually, let's put it actually next to destination IP. I'm going to put a comma here because I'm going to be adding a column. And the function that I want to use is xForce and it's right there, IP category. So I want to get the, the, the category of all the IPs. So what I put here, well, precisely the destination IP. Look ahead, helps me here. I put a parenthesis. And let's run this again and see if I get another column. I do. And these are elements that do not have a bad reputation. They have not been categorized, not necessarily bad reputation. Generally, it is the case, but there's no category. And the category can be like malware, like a botnet, like a, a scanning IP, stuff like that, right? And, uh, well, but I don't want those that have that NA stuff. So how can I get those filter? Well, I go into the where, which is where you filter stuff. And I'm going to add another condition in here. I'm going to put an, where the x, this category, but the problem is I cannot use this the way it is. It, the easiest way is before I use it in the where clause, let me actually rename this as a column that I can use. I'm going to call this bad. Okay. Again, I go little by little, I run it, and I see that column being called bad. And basically what I can do now is in the where, I can do, I have already, already the where, I can put an, where bad is different from an A. and hit enter and I only have one IP and I don't want to reveal you know the stuff and the that is actually happening here at home so that's what I covered that one in there but we have built a, a pretty good search but if I want to get additional data let me add a condition on the end and say for the last uh, 24 hours when I put the last 24 hours we can actually hover here and see it we get additional data in there. And we see some that have anonym, anonymized sales. Again, some of these things are not necessarily bad. Again, this dynamic thing mean, that doesn't uh, mean that any one of those are actually malicious. And uh, just to finish this up, if, if, I, if I'm interested in this particular IP, what I normally do is because I have advisor here, I click on my advisor, I put the IP address, and since advisor is subscribed to VirusTotal and CrowdStrike and Xforce and everybody else, 
I can easily get an answer from it and it's saying well there's no suspicious observable again this is not this is an IP that typically are from uh, cloud providers and those IP changes uh, frequently but I hope that this example have helped you uh, not be afraid of, uh, of uh, AQL, particularly if you don't come from, from a background on databases, it, it can be a little intimidated, but I hope that these and other examples that I plan on doing will help you grow in confidence and use AQL because as you've seen in the Pulse videos, that's the way you do uh, great searches and, and also you take a look at the Pulse video series if you have not done it as a way of really showing all these results in a beautiful and sexy looking type of dashboards.